Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the transit of Venus, which is going to happen in the sign of Aries from tomorrow. Today is 28th February 2020. And drikpanchang.com tells me that <clears throat> till 20th March, Venus is going to be in the sign of Aries. All right. So you will probably see this video on 29th February. And yes, it's leap year this year. So there are 29 days for February. And that day, 29th and 1st, 29th February and 1st March is very important because Venus will be in Gandanta zone that time. All right, because Venus is currently in 29 degrees of Pisces and the last degree of Pisces and the first degree of <coughs> air sign, uh, the sorry, the fire sign, all right, last degree of water and first degree of fire sign is known as Gandanta zone, all right, which means there are certain things which are untying. So, depending on the houses which Venus rules in your horoscope, you must have felt, or maybe you will feel it on 29th February and 1st March. <clears throat> and to some extent on 2nd March also because depending on the place where you are staying, it can uh, vary. Okay, if you are staying in the extreme east, then it will also be 2nd. So, in that case, these 3 days, 29, 1 and 2, these 3 days are very important because you would have realized that there are certain things which you will give up and there are certain things which you have to take, you have to accept. It's like, uh, shedding of the skin of the snake that that is what is Gandanta zone because water is where things end and fire is where things start so therefore when any planet transits the Gandanta zone it is understood that there are many things which we have to leave behind <clears throat> and there are many new things which we have to accept but of course, this zone is very painful, all right? The most dreaded Gandanta zone is the last degree of Scorpio and the first degree of Sagittarius. That's the most dreaded Gandanta zone. But all the three Gandanta zones are challenging. Why? Because uh, we don't like change. We like things to continue as they are. Well, there are two things basically. In one way, we like change also. Imagine there is no change. Everyday life is the same, you know, then you may feel it's very boring. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, at the same time, if you, if you see when that change comes, we do not welcome, all right? So there is like this inertia, this, uh, this feeling of laziness or incompetence to deal with the change. Even if we are not incompetent, but we tend to behave as if we are very incompetent, okay, to behave, to deal with the new uh, circumstances which life has thrown us at us. And then uh, similar is the situation of Venus currently. So therefore, you check which houses Venus rules in your chart. And depending on that, you will realize what, which are the areas where I have to give up certain things and accept new things. Right, so therefore, if Venus is your trinal lord or uh, lord of uh, the Kendras, then this these three days are very important, and also Venus uh, will enter Aries, as you know. Okay, and uh, later on, after 29th March, Venus, or oh, sorry, 28th March, Venus will enter the sign of Taurus, its own sign. And it will be hovering around in Taurus for a very long time, many, many, many months. And I have already made that video for Venus transit in Taurus because it is going to be retrograde after 18 months. So please have a look at that video also if you have not watched. Okay. Uh, and therefore, this transit of Venus into Aries will be like the foundation stone for the activities which will happen when Venus enters Taurus. So you will see during this month of March, there are many things which you will do, which will be foundational related to the houses which Venus rules in your chart. Okay, And they 
the results of those activities either good bad or positive or negative okay the ultimate fruit of those activities will come when finally venus enters taurus okay and of course this this will depend on the dashas that you are running because ultimately the predictions in vedic astrology are based on dashas it is not based on transits so so now let me tell you for who who whom will you uh, for which type of dashas and which kind of placements in the horoscope you will see maximum effects okay so the first one is uh, and yes of course as usual if you are new to the channel then uh, please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit you will find the website down in the description box and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so first if let's talk of vimshottri first all right so if in vimshottri you are uh, running the mahadasha antardasha or pratyantardasha of venus or mars then this transit is going to be very important why do i say venus or mars venus because of course it's the planet and mars because he is the dispositor of Aries, okay. Aries is not lauded by any other planet other than Mars. Scorpio is lauded by Ketu also, they say, apart from Mars. So, I won't mention any other planet. I would just say Mars and Venus. So, if you are running the Mahadasha, Antardasha, not so much Pratyantar, more of the Mahadasha and Antardasha. Why do I say not so much Pratyantar? Because, uh, because this... Aries transit of Venus is going to uh, is the last transit of Venus before the retrogression ends. So therefore, uh, this and in or Taurus it will be for four months. Okay, three months, four months, four months almost. Very long, very long. So therefore, it is not it's not possible to delineate using the pratyantars because if you are running the south like Sun, Moon, or Mars or Ketu, then Pratyantas will be very small, okay. So that is why I say Antardasha or Mahadasha, of course. So if you are running Venus Mahadasha, Mars Mahadasha, or Antar of uh, these two, then this will be very prominent. And also, if you are running uh, the Dasha of Sun, this also could be very prominent because Sun is the planet which gets exalted in that sign, okay. So whenever planets transit the sign of exaltation of a particular planet, that planet gets affected. So should I repeat, whenever planets, any planet transits the exaltation sign of a particular planet. So for example, uh, which is the exaltation sign for sun? It is Aries. Okay. So sun gets exalted in Aries, Ucharashi. So therefore, if any planet is transiting Aries, that planet, uh, that planet will affect the sun because the sun always wants to be in aries all right but now if there's another planet then that planet can either uh, support or oppose the exaltation of the sun all right so therefore this transit of uh, therefore any transit which happens in aries definitely affects the sun okay and of course saturn also could be affected because saturn gets debilitated there all right so generally, if the enemies of a particular planet transits the exaltation sign of that planet, it is not considered very good. And if the friends transit, it is considered good. So for example, here, the uh, for the sun, who, who are the friends of the sun? All right, it is Mars, Moon, and Jupiter. These three are the friends of the sun. So if they transit Aries, which is the exaltation sign of the sun, then sun also becomes more powerful because then it's like saying the, the his friends are also behaving like him okay so it's like he has more say within the uh, solar system within your horoscope right but if the enemy is like venus saturn or neutral planets neutral mercury let's keep aside mercury or rahu ketu these are enemies of the sun if uh, they transit aries then the sun feels that his authority is being challenged. Okay, so that that is how you know, and that is how you know what can happen in which case. Okay, which transit of planets will be good for which planets? All right. So, for example, if a uh, sun is your tenth lord in your horoscope, and you are running sun Mahadasha, 
then it could happen that uh, there are certain challenges which you face in your career because now the enemy of sun which is venus is transiting aries okay which is his sign of exaltation so it is like he cannot feel exalted because or he wants to feel but the enemy doesn't let him feel why because sun wants to rule and venus wants to share so ruling and sharing these are totally different things where they are totally contrary so does this mean this is bad no this is not bad it it is not good for the traits related to the sun that is all what i mean to say okay and then similarly if uh, venus transits libra that is the exaltation sign for saturn that is fantastic for saturn because venus and saturn are very good friends and therefore venus helps saturn to fulfill his agenda right so therefore the transit of venus in libra is very good for saturn all right this is how you see and now, so now when venus uh, enters aries you will see that you you can keep up you can go to the past and try to think what are the things which you were doing somewhere around let me give you a broad range around july august september october 2018 should i repeat july august september october 2018 so there were certain things which you were doing that time because that time venus was retrograde in libra or was going to be retrograde around that time i don't know exactly but around october november it was exactly in retrogression in libra so from that now again it is 18 months if you check okay so you can see what are the things that you were doing around july august september october november 2018 and did you think that there are certain areas which you need to change and you had made a change by december or during these 18 months okay so one of the best ways to study transits is to check the last time when this transit happened now for saturn it's very difficult because saturn transits you know in 25 30 years so a person only if he is in 40 50s 60s only he can remember what happened the last time all right And especially for rahu ketu also 18 years very difficult jupiter is still decent 12 years um, but for these planets especially sun uh, mercury and venus you can keep seeing what happened the last year so then you will know okay these are the areas which i changed and for venus it's very beautiful because he goes retrograde once in 18 months so you can check what are the areas that you are trying to deal and the house where libra was that house would tell you how you were trying to deal with those areas okay so here for example the houses which venus rules in your chart those are the houses which will demand a change okay but there are million ways to change things how will you make the changes that will depend on wherever aries is all right now this is the last transit before retrogression into taurus as i said so therefore the months july august september the, uh, these three months will give a very good clue because that that was also the transit of venus in debilitation in virgo 2018 which give you which gave you certain which gave you a need for certain changes and now this uh, this will happen from uh, aries to taurus okay so last time it was from virgo it went into libra so now from aries it goes into taurus so therefore this month is very crucial so keep a note on the things which you did that time one and half years back exactly 18 20 months back so you will understand what i am speaking okay and last time what happened during the retrogression the transit was happening in the sign ruled by venus itself okay libra but now it is not the case now it is happening in a different sign which is aries okay so of course aries is not a debilitation sign like for virgo it was okay but okay you could still say this time also the retrogression is finally happening in the uh, own sign of venus okay but the flavor of virgo and aries is very different okay Virgo is like you are doing too much analysis, but then you are not understanding what should I end up doing at the end of the day. Okay, Aries is not like Aries is like no, I have to do it now. Okay, so 
during this transit venus will cross over the three nakshatras the full nakshatra of Ash ashwini the full nakshatra of bharani and then the first pada of kritika also aries uh, it lies in aries the last 3d uh, 320 okay so the second third fourth pada of kritika is in the sign of taurus so therefore uh, you could say the first 10 days of this transit venus will be in uh, ashwini nakshatra and then the next 10 days it will be uh, or not, not 10 days i would say well, 12 days 12 days you can take like first 12 days ashwini then next 12 days it is uh, going to be bharani and then you know last three days it, it it will go to kritika some some approximation you can do like that and uh, by this you will get the flavor of the different nakshatras okay so when venus transits ashwini then you will find that there are a lot of things which you wanted to do which the change is initiated in ashwini okay but the change which you want is not very easy so you need to put a lot of effort and after putting a certain amount of efforts you will realize that you are not competent enough to do it the way you thought which happens when any planet enters bharani nakshatra okay and then when it enters kritika you will realize that it will not happen like this i have to do serious sadhana serious austerity serious tapasya to get this okay so ashwini is a very tricky nakshatra it is a very good nakshatra very beautiful nakshatra but ashwini tells you you can do it which is very good but the problem is we forget that it won't come without hard work okay so work hard during this transit when venus enters bharani especially and then in kritika you have to purify yourself you have to do austerities by which you can uh, get rid of the impurities which is preventing this change from happening all right so what this change is and how it will affect you that will depend on your horoscope that uh, we cannot make a generalized video for everyone but but this is a broad video for people to at least uh, know where to start all right so i hope this video gave you a good glimpse uh, of how to start and where to start just look at july august september october november 2018 so that will give you a good clue all right thank you very much for your patience and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit you will find the website down in the description box and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know what venus will do in the sign of aries okay and yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.